All right, so welcome to uh, Python regular expressions uh, made easy part 14 slash 2 or part 15 slash 2. Um, so this is part 2 of lookarounds. In the last video, we went, uh, we were introduced to lookarounds. And this video is just a continuation of the last video because the last video was uh, pretty long. Okay, so let's get started. Now, this is a very important topic. So uh, consecutive lookaround fallacy. This should be... Um, Okay, all right, so consecutive look around fallacy. Okay, so what I mean by that is I'll give you a clear example. All right, so we have this string. Um, it's a multi-line string, cherry 100 red, uh, apple 150 green, uh, grapes 250, nothing here. So our pattern, what it's doing is we want to look for, uh, make sure there's a number and make sure there is a, a color. So essentially we want to make sure there's a number and make sure there's a color and we want to pull out um, any fruit that satisfies the condition. So if, the, if there's a number and a, a color associated with the fruit, we want to pull out that fruit. Now I'm going to run this and then run this and now we get an empty string. And I want to show you guys exactly why. There's nothing wrong inherently, inherently wrong with the pattern, but I want to show you one of the key misconceptions or the key mistakes people make uh, regarding lookarounds. So the thing you want to be careful of is that having two lookarounds doesn't mean it's going to look for one followed by the other. So in this case, um, we have this lookaround followed by this followed by this. Okay. So this entire thing doesn't mean we're looking for a bunch of numbers followed by a bunch of space followed by more numbers. That's the thing you need to really be careful of. So let's just uh, break down this pattern and really look into what I'm talking about. So we're looking for a bunch of letters between A and A to Z. So we have uh, a bunch of letters between A to Z. Okay, this gets captured. Then we're looking for a space, as many, zero or more spaces. So this entire thing gets captured. Now here we have a look around, um, a positive look ahead. And we're looking for a bunch of numbers. So we're looking for a bunch of numbers. Now what happens is this actually doesn't get cons uh, consumed. It actually just looks for a bunch of numbers, but the cursor comes back here. Right? So it looks for a bunch of numbers and the cursor comes back here. Now we're looking for space, a bunch of space, and this doesn't satisfy it because it's just a bunch of numbers. So that's the thing you have to be careful of. So here we have um, a bunch of numbers followed by space. And actually to further clarify my point, what I'm going to do is I'll actually just do this, um, which is put this in a non-capture group as well. All right, so if I run this as well, we get an empty pattern. Okay. So this doesn't mean consecutive. It doesn't mean one fall be the other. So let me just go back and explain this once more. Okay. I know I'm driving this over and over, but this is very crucial for you guys to understand. So after the space, we're looking for a bunch of numbers. It doesn't consume this, right? So it's not being consumed. So it's not like it looks for a bunch of numbers followed by a bunch of space followed by a, a, a bunch of letters. So this is not one fall by the other. It's actually all three at the same time or it's looking for all three conditions so these are actually three separate conditions so what's actually happening here is it's looking for a bunch of numbers okay that gets satisfied but it's also looking for a bunch of space which it, in this case is not being satisfied and it's looking for a bunch of characters so in this case which is not being satisfied so it looks and then it comes back so this condition gets satisfied. So it looks, this condition gets satisfied. Okay, then it goes to the next condition. That doesn't get satisfied. So it comes back and we get an empty pattern because this entire thing is the pattern. So we're looking for something that fits this entire pattern. So once again, this is the uh, zero width assertion that it doesn't consume any characters. No characters are being consumed. It just looks and the cursor sort of comes back. So once again, that's a key point, and that's why we're getting an empty string. Now, if we actually wanted to um, consume, remember, we wanted to consume the cherry, apple, grapes only if this portion gets satisfied, right? So what we can do is we could put the entire this entire thing in uh, look ahead. What it does is it looks for a bunch of characters, a uh, bunch of characters followed by a space, a bunch of space, followed by a uh, number, space, and that. So a bunch of characters followed by space, followed by numbers, blah, blah, blah. This doesn't get consumed, so the cursor moves back here. And the only part that's getting consumed is, of course, uh, this. This is our actual pattern. 
And since we're not using any groups, re.findAll will just uh, pull out our entire pattern, which is a uh, cherry and apple. So cherry and apple are uh, satisfying this condition. So hopefully, um, yeah, you guys understand that. Um, and let's just move ahead to the next portion. Okay, so I have one more example. And here, it's actually showing you an example of where uh, lookarounds are very useful and how you can use lookarounds, uh, consecutive lookarounds, the correct way to use consecutive lookarounds. Okay. All right, so this is our pattern. Now, this pattern is looks pretty complicated, but all it's doing is it's looking for a bunch of characters. None of this is being consumed. It's all within this. It's looking for a bunch of characters uh, followed by an A to Z, a lowercase letter. Then this is looking for a bunch of characters followed by an A to uppercase. This is looking for a bunch of characters um, followed by a digit. Essentially what this, what this is doing, by using consecutive positive look-aheads, what we're doing is we're making sure all four conditions have to be satisfied. This is very, very useful for password validation. So you know when you sign up for a website um, and they want to make sure that you're using at least uh, one punctuation mark, one uppercase, and one letter. Well, they're, I'm assuming they're probably using regular expression. They're probably using something like this um, to make sure you actually insert a capital letter, you actually insert a, a punctuation mark, you actually insert a lowercase letter and number. So they're using regular expression to be successfully able to do that. Okay, so let's just check this out. So what this is essentially doing is we have to have at least one letter, one uppercase letter, uh, one number, and one sort of uh, punctuation mark that falls within this category. Uh, if the, all of those are satisfied, what we're going to do is we're going to consume the entire string. So this is where the consumption actually happens. And these are just checks. So these checks, they check the entire string, come back, check the entire string, come back, check the entire string, come back. And if all four are satisfied, then we want to consume the entire string because we know the password's valid. So if I run this, uh, we have two different strings, um, string one and string two. Now I'm going to run string one of the pattern. So I want you to look at string one because string one actually satisfies the condition uh, because we need uh, uppercase letters, okay. We need numbers, which satisfy here. Uh, we need an exclamation point, which uh, satisfies this, and we need um, a bunch of letters, which is satisfied by this. Okay, so this string one actually satisfies our entire pattern, so it should pull out the entire pattern because we have this that actually consumes everything. Okay, so we get the entire match, uh, 0 to 17. Now with string 2, I purposely didn't include the explanation point and the periods. Okay, so so this portion is not going to be satisfied. So everything is going to be satisfied except for this. And if we run um, re.search with uh, string 2, what happens is um, we get nothing. So let me just, uh, yeah. So I'm running this, and as you can see, pattern string 2, we get nothing because you're supposed to satisfy each of these conditions, and we didn't satisfy the fourth condition. So, uh, so this is a, a key example, or a very, a very clear example, showcasing some of the powers of lookarounds. Okay, so if we didn't look around, actually, um, I got this from a Stack Overflow. Uh, this is actually, if we didn't use a lookaround, this is how our pattern would actually be. So we'd have to use all these cases of or. Uh, it would have to include this 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 or it would have to be in this way or it would have to be in this way or uh, this way like this is supposed to also work um, I have actually haven't tested it I actually got this from stack overflow but this is what we would have to do a very complicated uh, regular expression to do the same thing we did with the with the uh, look aheads for uh, password validation so yeah so as you can see it's a lot more complicated a lot more work to the same thing and that's one of the key benefits of uh, look arounds. Okay, so I think that's it for uh, positive look arounds in this video. The next video I will try to tackle uh, negative look arounds and um, showcase some of the uh, benefits of using uh, negative look arounds. Uh, one thing is that um, since I'm in Florida right now we're getting hit by the, uh, the hurricane. I'm not sure how bad it's going to be um, but in a few days we'll know and 
there's a possibility we might be out of power for a couple of weeks or so. So if that's the case, uh, some of my videos, are, uh, the next video is going to be at least a couple of weeks if we get hit by power. Um, if not, I try to uh, put out a video uh, at least once a week. So yeah, so if anything bad happens with the hurricane, I won't be able to uh, put out a video for a few weeks. All right. So yeah, so that's it with um, look around. Hopefully you found that useful. And um, yeah, just comment on what you liked, what you disliked, and um, if you have any questions. All right, so I'll see you guys next time.